That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, D e for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Yes, they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's camel show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hey, Costello, Costello. Come over here. Isn't it wonderful to be back in California, Luke? Uh, it's nice to be back in California. Yes. Boys, did I have fun coming in on a plane? I told jokes and all the passengers rolled on the floor. Were your jokes that funny? No, I loosened all their safety belts. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, what about oh, that beautiful well blonde? On top of each other, huh? What about that beautiful blonde? You know, the one you met in New York. Are you uh, going to write to her? It's no use, Abbott. I couldn't get the first base with her. Why not? Her husband was on second. Hey, oh, you idiot. <laughs> I, you idiot, I, I don't know what woman would see in you anyway. Oh, I guess I'm just irresistible. Well, even tonight, coming down here on the bus, the lady conductor punched out, I love you on my transfer. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Costello, you'll never be happy like my wife, Betty, and I. Oh, yes. Did you see her tonight? Oh, Betty. Oh, didn't she look beautiful, Lou? Yeah, she was wearing her new makeup. Yes. Dutch cleanser number four. Yes. <laughs> never mind that. Did my uh, brother Norman meet you at the airport? Yes, and right away he dragged me into a joint to celebrate. Abbott, Norman had one bottle of beer and passed out cold. My brother Norman passed out from drinking one bottle of beer. He didn't drink it. I hit him over the head with it. Uh, uh, <laughs> you idiot. You know he pots his hair wait, in the middle now? Yes, all right, wait a minute, just a minute. Didn't I see you and your brother Pat down at San Pedro this morning? What uh-huh. were you doing there? Well, Pat was trying to buy one of them new Navy surplus boats. He, he'd have got one, too, if he hadn't have been a veteran. Well, what do you and your brother Pat want with a boat? You know nothing about boats. Oh, is that so, Abbott? I joined the Navy when I was four years old. Uh, how did you do that? I lied about my age. Uh, <laughs> who did you sail with? Who did I sail with? Yes. I was on a ship with Captain Epson. I, I never heard of Captain Epson. He's an old salt. They... <laughs> Look, did you, ha- did you have any dangerous experiences in the Navy? Well, one time a schooner capsized on me. Uh, what did you do? What could I do? I wiped off the bar and ordered another one. Oh, <laughs> so... Don't be a dull blue. I don't believe... I don't believe you've ever been to sea. You know absolutely nothing about the sea. Abbott, it so happens tonight that my bedtime story is going to be all about the sea. It's the story of Moby Dick. I tell the story all by myself, Abbott, and I don't need any help from you. So why don't you call up the automobile club and show them what a real wreck looks like? Oh, all right, now, look. <laughs> Go ahead and tell your story. Now, Moby Dick was a great big whale. Yes, and Moby uh, Dick, no, as uh, I said before, uh, a he was a big a, whale. A mammal. He, he a, whale was... is, a whale is a mammal. You're interrupting a little earlier, I you? said a, a whale is a mammal. Yes, he was a mammal. Yeah. He was not a mammal, yeah. Abbott. How could he be a mammal? His name was Dick. He was a papal. And he had seven fiddles. Now shut up and let me tell a story. All right, go ahead. You're getting me a little burnt up Stop already. Take it easy. Don't get excited now. I'm not getting excited. All right, you look it. Oh, do I? Now, Moby Dick was a great big whale, and he lived in the ocean. He loved to swim. When the water came up, he'd swim in. When the water went down, he'd swim out. Yeah, he swam with the tides. Yes. He, 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 he. Could I have that again? I, I, he swam with the tides. Tides. Oh, he didn't wear any tights. He was so big, he couldn't get a pair of tights to fit him, Abbott. <laughs> oh, yes, Abbott. Don't get me mixed no. up in the story now. I'm getting a little mad. Go ahead. Now I've got to be nice again. All right, go ahead. Now, nobody could catch Moby Dick. When do we laugh at this when? thing? They're laughing before they're supposed to. All right. <laughs> Don't laugh now, folks. All right, all right. Take it easy. Now, when anybody come after, come after Moby Dick, he'd squirt water at them through his nose. No, and not nose. Did. Spout. Spout. Yes. He, he spout. Yeah. It's about time you keep your big mouth shut. <laughs> now, Abbott, let me finish the story. Well, go ahead. I'm waiting for the finish. Now, now, one day, Moby Dick was swimming along, and he passed a shark that was talking up his cue. What kind of shark? Now, who said that? I did. That's in case you asked. I'm not in <laughs> uh, This was a pool shark. Now, get out of here before I bank your head in the side pocket. Now, take it easy. Now, Moby Dick was hungry. He was very hungry for a big whale, so he grabbed a great big clam. Abalone? Cl- huh? What'd you abalone, say? Abalone, abalone. Abbott. This is no baloney. This is a true story. No, you, you said you said anything about baloney. Who said it? Who did? You, uh, you, you did. I didn't say anything. What did you say? I said abalone. There you go. You said it again. No, abalone. no, you dummy. I said the whale was eating abalone. Where would the whale get baloney in the ocean? No, no. <laughs> Abbott, he was eating a great big clam. Abalone is a clam. How do you like that? They're making baloney out of clams. No, no, no. They don't make a baloney out of clams. The kind of clam I'm talking about is abalone. A clam is abalone? That's right. One of us is nuts. 
Abbott, why don't you baloney up and let me come and finish my story? <laughs> you mean clam. Uh, Didn't you just tell me that clam is abalone? That's right. Well, if you don't shut your clam, I'll hit you over the head with a baloney. All right, now, don't get excited. <laughs> now, Moby Dick was a friendly whale. He liked to play with the fish, especially uh, the itty-bitty little fishy. Guppies? Sure, he, he, he... What was that? Uh, guppies, guppies. Haven't you ever heard of guppies? Oh, I listen to guppies all the time. Guppies Tavern. <laughs> Now, Moby Dick was swimming along. One day, he saw a swordfish fighting with a mackerel. The swordfish stabbed the mackerel. Then he stabbed him again. And he stabbed oh, him again. And he stabbed mind. him again. That poor little mackerel. And he stabbed him again. That poor little mackerel must have been full of holes. Yeah, he was a holy mackerel. Hold on. Then... <laughs> Will you stop laughing now? Well, when do we laugh at it? I'm Come not on. even finished with the story yet. Now, then the swordfish saw Moby Dick. Moby Dick. <laughs> and, he, and he lunged at him. <laughs> And he, and, he, and he lunged at him. And well, Moby Dick and what lunged happened? at the swordfish, and, and the swordfish happened? lunged at Moby Dick. Well, what happened? They had lunch together. Uh, and, uh, and, then, and then Moby Dick paid the check. He was a very wealthy whale, Abbott. He owned stores all over the country. Oh, now, look, don't get silly. What kind of stores got a whale uh, Abbott, own? Abbott, ain't you ever never heard of the whale and drug stores? Well, all right, go ahead. <laughs> now, Moby Dick didn't feel so good, so he went to see the doctor fish. Doctor fish? Yeah, he was a famous sturgeon. So? so he, <laughs> he, well, he was, too. All he was right, a well, great physician. Physician. <laughs> now, when he got to the sturgeon's office, there was a walrus in there having a tooth pulled. That tooth and, tusk. And, huh? Uh, tusk, tusk. Oh, yes. Well, tusk, tusk to you and a couple of poop All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, also in the sturgeon's office was a big fish with band-aids stuck on both sides of his jaws. What was the matter with him? He was plastered to the gills. Oh, <laughs> why didn't he come to the sturgeon's office? Well, he just stopped in for the halibut. For the halibut. Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Then a quartet of fish, a quartet of fish came in and started singing. Now, wait a minute, wait, so wait, wait, wait a minute. A quartet of fish? Oh, what a quartet of it. First tuna, second tuna, barracuda, and bass. Mm. <laughs> they sang for scale. Oh, they yeah. Were, yeah, they were always good for a fin apiece. Yes, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly a voice hollered, I's regusted brother crawfish. Let's all go home. Who was that? That was a kingfish. The king. Now, <laughs> now on the way home, Moby Dick, he passed the school of fish. Well, what kind of fish? How do I know what kind of fish? Well, were they weak fish? What do I know about their physical condition? I, all right. All I know that a couple of them were Gershwin fish. Uh, Gershwin fish? Yeah, Porgy and Bess. Uh, por so, uh, <laughs> now, look, well, just a minute. Porgy and Bess had nothing to do with this. Oh, they did, too. Oh, Some no. of our best tunas come from Porgy and Bess. I got plenty of nothing. Oh, stop, Costello. This is ridiculous. What happened to, to Moby Dick? The now, it's a very, now we're getting near the end. That's it. Come on. Very sad ending, Abbott. All right, let's hear it. One day he swam away and nobody ever saw the big whale again. He swam away. Abbott, you're supposed to say, Costello, I'll tell you where he went. And no, I say to you, I keep out of this. Away. Okay, Listen, now. Go ahead. I'll tell you that. Okay. I naturally would ask I you I started that. the story and I'm going to finish it. Whales are just like elephants, Abbott. They have a graveyard where they go to die. No matter where a whale lives, he goes to the whale's graveyard to die. Whales swim thousands of miles from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, against currents, over reefs, through storms, hurricanes, typhoons, and monsoons. They swim and they swim until they get to the whale graveyard. And when they get there, Abbott, they die. They die? Yeah, it's the trip that kills them. <laughs> is the best teacher. Remember during the war when we all had experiences like this? Joe, look. Three whole packs of cigarettes. Of course, I walked 23 blocks to find but them, did but... did you find any camels? Nope, not a camel in the bunch. Oh, well, the cigarettes are smoked these days. But say, smoking all these different kinds sure makes you realize more than ever how good camels are. Yes, during that wartime cigarette shortage, smokers smoked whatever brand they could get. They compared the different brands, whether they intended to or not. That experience taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. The result? Today, more people smoke camels than ever before. Yes, millions have found that camels suit their tea zone, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, to a tea. They found that their taste delights in the rich, full flavor of camels, that their throats welcome camels' cool mildness. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Time to light up a camel and listen to Skinny Anna sing You'll always be the one I love Every hour, every day, every year You'll always be the one I love Through each smile, through each sigh, through each tear My heart will feel the same old glow Even though the stars may fade from above 
I promise there will be no other arms for me. You'll always be the one I love. Feel the same old glow, even though the stars may fade from above. I promise there will be no other arms for me. You'll always be the one I love. I just bought a boat. I just bought a boat, Abbott, at the government auction. Here's a picture of it. My, she looks beautiful standing there in her slip. She's in a slip. Uh-oh, wrong picture. No, 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 you dummy. <laughs> this is the right picture. It's a, it's a picture of a yawl in a slip. A picture of what? A uh, yawl in a slip. Abbott, yawl is crazy. I never had a picture taken in a slip. No, 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 no. A yawl is a boat, an old tub. You did it. Now, that did it, Abbott. You all can't insult me. Just for that, I'm going to hold off and give you... What? The dirtiest look you ever had. Now, now listen to you. Listen, you idiot. If you're going to sail this boat, you'll, you'll have to get a license. Now, run across the street to City Hall, and you'll find that the boat license is in room 3... 310, that's it. Okay, room 310. Yeah. We'll invite the whole gang out on a fishing party, Abbott. That's I think it. I'll make it formal. Formal. No fish admitted without tails. Wait right here, Abbott. I'll go over to room 310 and get the license. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, that dummy, I hope he gets a license without balling things up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 310? That's the marriage license bureau. Costello! Costello! Uh-oh. Oh, it's two ladies gone. How do you do, clerk? I'm Lou Costello, and I'd like to take out a license. A license? Well, congratulations, Mr. Costello. Where did you find her? Government surplus. <laughs> no kidding. Say, were there many of them down there? Oh, sure, hundreds of them. Some from the Coast Guard, some from the Marines, some from the Navy, and two or three from private parties. <laughs> Were uh, most of them in good shape? Nah, a lot of them needed a new bridge. <laughs> On some, the paint was cracked. Others were bulging a little at the seams, but I picked the best one. Yes, sir, sure, I'll bet you did. Uh, when does the ceremony take place? Tomorrow. I'm going to shove her into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> a boy. Right away, show her who's the boss. Oh, I'll be the master, all right. I'm going to start the ceremony by cracking a bottle of champagne on her nose. <laughs> Brother, you got the right idea. By the way, how old is she? Oh, she's pretty old. But she'll be all right when she gets the barnacles scraped off. <laughs> barnacles? <laughs> barnacles, eh? I thought mine was bad just because she had a couple of bunions. Bunions? <laughs> bunions on a boat? Costello! Costello! Yeah, Costello, come out of here. Come on. Hey, Abbott, this come guy on. is nuts. His boat's got bunions. Who's talking about boats? I am. That's what I want a license for. Uh, look, this is the marriage license bureau, Costello. I've got the boat license. Come on. We'll pick up Skinny and Marilyn and start off on that fishing trip. Hurry up. Hiya, fellas. Well, I'm all ready to go out on the boat with you, Costello. You're going on this boat in that outfit? What's the idea of wearing a woman's nightgown and carrying a doll? That's in case the boat sinks. You know the rule of the sea. Women and children first. Skinny, why don't you crawl up in the crow's nest? What for? Get one of those crows to sit on that egg you just laid. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you are, Louis, my love. My, what a beautiful boat. Marilyn, my sweet, let's you and I sail away to some tropical island. We'll sit alone in the moonlight and I'll sing a romantic song in your ear like beer barrel polka. Oh, but Louis, there's nothing romantic about a beer barrel. There is if you drink the beer first. <laughs> Ah, oh, Louis, my love, you're so cute. When we get back from this boat trip, I'm going to take you to my house. Yes? I'll fix you a big dinner. Mm -hmm. Roast duck, oh. chocolate cake, chocolate strawberry cake. ice cream. Strawberry ice cream. And then after dinner, yeah. we'll go in the living room. Oh, yes. And have a demitasse. I knew it. I knew you weren't treating me that nice for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Costello, Costello, I weighed the anchor and we're ready to cast off. Get up on the bridge there and act as first mate. Aye, aye, sir. Okay. Okay. Pull anchor, pull anchor, port your missing, port your missing, loop your poop deck, loop your poop deck. <laughs> 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 Cut. 
Run down the hatches. Run up the rigging. Reef in the mainsail. Pearl the spinsail. Hard the starboard. Man the foresail. Lou, you poop that. Ah, Costello, I thought you were a sailor. Look, you got the helm caught in the rigging. Well, get the helm out of here. <laughs> Hello, Louis. Hello. Louis Costello's a lousy sailor. Who said that? So that's the ship's parrot. Oh. Hello, Polly. Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? That's all I hear. Why don't somebody offer me a rye crispy? <laughs> Ah, never mind that bird, Costello. I should have never come on this fishing trip with you. But there's dangerous reefs out there. There's a storm coming up. Now man the wheel and get us through those reefs. Aye, aye, sir. What a terrible storm. This is my chance to be a hero. Can I get my ship and my crew safely through these savage seas? Can I navigate the swirling waters of the jagged reef? Can I bring my ship untouched through the treacherous shoals? presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro-Golden-Mare, producers of Lady in the Lake. Assisted by the four hits, Marilyn sings for camel fans everywhere, Wish I May, Wish I Might. Needles! Pins! Triplets! Twins! When a man marries, his trouble begins. When a man dies, his trouble ends. Let's touch thumbs and see who wins. Wish I may, wish I might. Get the wishes I'm wishing tonight. A young cadet, blonde or brunette. A Romeo in search of Juliet. Wish I might, wish I may. Get the wishes I'm wishing today. A lot of noise, a lot of boys, and an awful lot of poise. I want a date who'll stay out late. A brother rat who leave me flat won't rape. Plus an orchid from New York. A raft of taffeta will be round me. Scads of lads will haul me, and they will cheer for the bell of the brawl of the year. So hold me close and hug me tight and get the wish I wish I may I might. I wish I may. Wish I had a dozen roses. I wish I might. Wish I had the proper clothes. I wish I may. Wish I had a slinky hairdo. I wish I might. Wish my evening gown was bare too. I wish I may. I would knock the little eyes out if, if I, I could get the wish, wish I wish tonight. Wish I didn't have a chaperone Wish we had a chance to be all alone We could slip away and tell jokes and drink hopes But we're afraid the prof would never condone it So we wish we may, we wish we might Wish we had a secret hideaway Wish I might And a car and wish to drive away Wish I might In a private rendezvous we'll dance Wish I might What an invitation to romance So just say needles, miss, sniffling, twins Give a yell Give a yell Give a cheer Give a cheer For the bell of the brawl of the year so hold me close and hug me tight. Cause that's the wish I wish I may. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. You have probably heard about that survey. Three leading independent research organizations put this question to 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. 
Camel's rich, full flavor and cool mildness hit the spot with doctors as with millions of other smokers. If you're not smoking Camel's now, try a Camel on your T-Zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat, the true proving ground for any cigarette. See if Camel's rich flavor of superbly blended choice tobaccos isn't welcomed by your taste. See if Camel's cool mildness isn't mighty acceptable to your throat. See if you two don't say, yes, Camel's certainly suit my T-Zone to a T. Well, now you've done it, Costello. Oh, yeah. We're shipwrecked, shipwrecked on this deserted island. We can't even tell where we are. I could tell in a minute if I had one of those little round gadgets. What little round gadget? You know that little round thing with a needle in it that says north, north by east, north, north, south, east, east, east by east, east by southwest, west, west by south, west by southwest, south, south by north, south by northwest. Wait a minute, you mean a compass. Isn't it funny I can never remember that word? <laughs> well, I, I wish we knew where we were. Hey, Abbott. We're in the land of the Incas. How, how, how do you know? If I didn't... Hey, you are the four Inca spots. Hey, Inca. <laughs> oh, Lewis, honey, we've got to get off this island. I just saw four big Incas. Yeah, they're four of the biggest Incas I ever saw. <laughs> but don't worry, Marilyn, darling. You're talking to a great sailor, a great fisherman. I'll get us off this island. Sailing, sailing over the bounding sea, you'll always find Costello, for a fisherman is he. Lou Costello, the famous fisherman. I was hitting the puss with a salmon while the salmon was in the can. Sailing, sailing over the bounding sea, you'll always find Costello, for a fisherman is he. He went sailing before he became a blimp. My father used me for bait because I was a little shrimp. Costello, I didn't know you were so fond of the sea I'm a regular Isaac Walton It's in my blood My red corpuscles go in and out with a tide The Costellos were all great sailors, Abbott All the way back to 1492 America was discovered by Christopher Costello There never was a sailor who was neater He sailed the ocean in his three famous boats The Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Anita they're running at Hollywood Park. Bazooka is going to the front. Bingo is second. Clinker is third. Coming into the stretch, it's Rosebud in front. Bonnie B by four lengths. Firefly is third by eight. And the winner is Girdle. They let him out in the stretch. <laughs> ah, Lewis, my little stout trout. What thrilling adventures you must have had on the ocean. Yes, I had mal de mer, too. Mal de mer? Yep, that's French for you can't take it with you. <laughs> oh, Lewis, you're so smart and wonderful. Dear Lewis, to me, you're a hero in bell-bottom slacks. When I'm on the sea, I'm the pride of the waves and the wax. <laughs> when you're at my side, I could sail in a sea full of squalls. Let's Go for a ride. Yes, yes. In a barrel down Niagara Falls. <laughs> He's a sailor man and a fisherman too. He's the smartest fisherman you ever knew. Avashi lovers make fast the mainsail, strip down the mizzenmast, swab those decks, you dirty swabs. Loop the poop deck. <laughs> Hey, hey, Costello, wait a minute. Do you mean to tell me that you really understand all of those nautical terms? Did I say something nautical? I'm sorry. No, 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 I mean, do you understand navigation? Yeah, but I'm a real navigator. When I was a baby, I played with boats just like a sailor. And then as a boy scout, I learned to tie knots just like a sailor. Then last night, I whistled at a girl just like a sailor. How did you make out? Shake hands with a landlubber. <laughs> ah, but I love the ocean. When I see the sea, then my heart starts to melt. I have fished every fish, and I've smelled every smelt. I've dueled in the sun with a swordfish. I have frolicked with fin and with patty. But I can eat fish because I'm a potter, and a fish may be somebody's daddy. <laughs> I swam uh, with the fish in the lakes and the pools. 
I got a degree from attending their school. I once kissed a mermaid just for a laugh. And now that same mermaid is my better half. <laughs> Many brave hearts are asleep in that deep. So beware. Costello, Costello, Coste Costello, how's it feel being way down there? I'm feeling mighty low. <laughs> well, Costello, there's only one way we can get off this island. Somebody has got to swim to the mainland and get help. Here. Buckle on this life preserver and get going. Okay, Abbott. I'll go behind these bushes, take off my clothes, put on the life preserver, and I'll swim for help. Oh, this is terrible, Mr. Abbott. We're slowly starving to death. Yeah, Costello's been gone for four days and four nights. Poor Costello. I, I'm glad I gave him that life preserver. I, I can see him battling those waves, struggling through that turn. Sir, if I will. Oh, my goodness, my mind's off it. But for four days and four nights, I wonder what's taking him so long. Hey, 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 Emmett! Hey, look, it's Costello. He's back. He's made it. Oh, Lewis, honey, you don't know how I've worried for four days and four nights hmm. while we waited for you to come back. Costello, I've never been so happy to see you. I, I'm glad you're back, Lou. Back? I didn't even start yet. How in the heck do you get into this life preserver? What? <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Van Nuys, California, U.S. Army Pratt General Hospital, Coral Gables, Florida, U.S. Naval Hospital, Brooklyn, New York, U.S. Marine Hospital, Cleveland, Ohio, and Veterans Hospital, Newcastle, Delaware. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with a final word. Well, Costello... Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Yes, Abbott, and I've written a beautiful Valentine poem all for you. Oh, that's very sweet. Would you like to read it? Certainly. Here it goes. What Harpo means to Groucho and Chico, what Cougat means to Tico Tico, what Molly means to Fibber McGee, what a few beads mean to Gypsy Rose Lee, what a patch on a seat means to the pants of a fellow, Abbott, my pal, that's what you mean to Lou Costello. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night. When the tobacco in your pipe is full-flavored and rich, when it smokes cool and mild, why, that's pipe appeal. And the way to enjoy that kind of pipe appeal is to remember that P.A. stands both for pipe appeal and for Prince Albert. Yes, Prince Albert is the smoking tobacco with a rich, full flavor and cool mildness. Burn slow and even, too, because it's crimp cut. Give your pipe pipe appeal with Prince Albert. And for ear appeal, tune in to hear Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night. Remember, Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>